Stand by for action. Thanks for joining me. My name is Dave Milner. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy, and I want to welcome you to part two of this episode of the Unpleasant Blind Guy on EDL Radio. Now remember, if you want to contact me with comments, questions, show suggestions, awesome American suggestions, I'm available at UBG Contact on Twitter, or I can also be found as Dave Milner or Agador, that's A-G-G-E-D-O-R, on Mublet, the Tea Party Community, Spreely, Minds, MeWe, or Gab. Now let's begin. I think Elizabeth might possibly agree with you, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, <laughs> she's probably having a looking out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but uh, again, looking out, looking in, uh, we have the same sort of thing with so many of our singing stars and whatnots over here in the United States. Oh, we we hate I've the United States. They've got brains amongst them, have they? Have they got brains well, amongst them all? Well, no, it's just. Um, it's just a uh, a lack, as you said, Jeff. You pointed this out yourself. A lack of gratitude for the people that that buy their music. Um, you know, as uh, with Elton John, it was for the people who bought his records because that's what he that's what he put out when uh, when he first um, got famous was records. Um, and of course, nowadays it's all MP3s and things of that nature. But um, yeah, he's still making whoever, royalties on it, Dave. He's still making mega bucks, isn't he, bro? Of course, yeah. Buying, you know, um, uh, the people buying buying his music, going to his concerts when when he has them, uh, buying his merchandise. I think I'm not sure that there wasn't a movie made about him recently. I don't know, you know, but uh, at, at any rate, for him to turn his back on the people who have made the decision that they have and say the things that he has, I think just shows the height of of ingratitude to a great well, nation. Well, it's just a part of the whole yeah. weird setup, Dave. That's where he's going to, it's where he want to be. He wants to be there in the heart of holy weirdos, just like himself. That's where he's planning to go, Dave. Guarantee, unless he's got, he's built the Epstein there, uh, island or something or other, Dave. That possibly could be, um, could be in his um, uh, on his on his list. I, I wouldn't be surprised, Dave. Far from it. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at anything the guy does, Jeff. But l- let's uh, let's move on with the list here, because I know you know there's. I've been doing this, uh, you know, wanting to do this for a while because I know that there's one thing on this this list that you're really going to agree with. But another thing that Delling Pole says we can do without. Uh, in uh, 2020 is George Soros, and, and I have to agree. Uh, <laughs> and he says in here, George uh, really needs one to million, a, a million, a t- no, all, all the million, billions, whatever. I agree uh, with what you just said, Dave. He is, uh, if you think there's Satan out there, this guy uh, is playing a big part to be like Satan. Am I correct, Dave? All wrong. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, that's, that's the um, that's the thing, uh, and um, yeah, it's it's the kind of evil influence that we really don't need in this world. Um, now, the next thing he puts in, Jeff, um, is what they call the is what he calls Care Bear Commies, and his solution for them is number one, cancel their allowance; number two, confiscate their iPhones, their computer, and their television; number three, torch their car. Number four, barbecue their pet. Number five, uh, in extremists, but only in extremists, because this is actually banned under international law, along with biological and chemical weapons, and extreme forms of torture make them spend a year following the Twitter feed of left-wing activist Owen Jones until the Chinese water torture drip, drip, drip of the same old words and phrases, alt-right, Trump, racism, homophobia, demonizing Muslims, gammons, etc., drives them to the point of insanity. Now, that, that's his um, proposed solution. I mean, 
everything except everything except you know barbecue their pet or whatever. Is, is, I have to agree with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, um, no, that, 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 I believe that. You know, as I say, um, you know, I love animals and. I, um, and the animals, it's not their fault that people like themselves would uh, invest in in uh, a loving creature, loving creatures who've got no um, they've got no malice in them. Uh, so no, I, that's a bit, little bit extreme, Dave, uh, to to do anything against animals because we are animal lovers, myself and Dave, and, and millions and millions of us are across the globe. Well, that's right, Jeff. And the next one that he's got on this list, <laughs> and and it's about time that they're that they're well gone and heading out the door is Ramoners. Your view? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, you'd fed up with that 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 title, Dave. Ramoners, isn't it? Uh, it's so petty and sad, isn't it? Ramoners. It's just. It, it is uh, that the, oh, something that's got me down. I want to say this uh, that uh, I was listening uh, a little while ago to um, you know Joss's show. He was having all sorts of issues himself, Dave. Don't think we're the, it's just us. Um, D Lloyd, they were having issues, or, or, or I know Joss was internet down, you know, sort of thing. About uh, they were talking about we was um, hoping there was money raised, uh, nearly a million pounds raised. At the Big Ben to chime uh, on our Brexit day, the People's Day, Dave. Well, oh, it's be cool. been declined for some unknown reason or not. That money's been raised to ring the bell, and um, it was put down. So that was something else, um, you know. Well, it's that's probably down bonus. to these remoners. They don't, don't want it to be, uh, you know, this, they, they, they've got their victory already. We don't want them ringing bells across this country. Well, I say this, I say this, that anybody that can get out of the bell, whatever, or if you've got, I don't know, Lisa out of church, ring the bells, ring the bells, rejoice. It's our time. We fought hard and long to be where we are. Do not let them get any credence of what they do, uh, because the Ramonas will always be the Ramonas. Their time is coming to an end. Time for us now. The people, we spoke in the ballot box. We said what we had to say. We didn't have, we took it to the streets. We was always, always just trying you know, to try to keep the peace. Even though, I'm, I'm talking about the EDL there, we was being attacked from left, right, centre, you name it. But we still held the line. And we still believed in what we believed with Brexit. You know, this is a great time for our nation to do what this country's always been good at making great deals with our free agents across the world. Dave, I just want to say that. I know I've overshot the thing about that, but I had to say that, brother. Well, it's not a bad, it's not a bad idea, Jeff, and, and I'll expand on it a bit. Look, guys, if you don't have bells, if you don't have some kind of a bell, it doesn't matter if you be a bicycle bell, it can be, I don't know, like a cowbell or a, or one of those, you know, hand bells like they used, like they used you know, a million years ago to uh, call kids to school. Find you know go on go on YouTube or wherever and find find a sound effects MP3 of bells, okay and Yay! put that Dave, bang put on. that on put, I love it, put man. that on your put that on your phone uh, it's, it put it especially if you can put it on your boombox um, get it in get it in your car stereo system and hey midnight on the thirty first um, you know oh, wow. bang it out. Loud and proud, and yeah, yeah. Oh, Dave, I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is why um, Mr. Milner, my dear friend, all of a sudden he'll come out with something, and I'll just go, "Wow, what an idea!" And you just done that right then, Dave. I salute you, brother. Well done. I just hope people can, <laughs> like the old song said, you know, uh, get it on, bang a gong, get it on, you know. Um, uh, because it in is. In those dingers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because if you can't ring the bells, bring your, 
No, no, I was going to say that, but I've, I, I rephrased it a little bit because <laughs> it might be, it's a family show, isn't it? So, no, you mustn't ring your balls. I mean, you, you, no, there's other things you can ring. Uh, <laughs> well, it depends well, if it's so it... cold out there, you'd be able to ring whatever, can't you, Dave? You know what I mean? Well, it depends on what neighborhood you're in and, you know, um, if, well, it's been so cold <laughs> lately. It's been so cold lately, Jeff. I'm, I'm not really sure anybody could even bring the brass monkeys out. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, I love I'm it, gonna, man. <laughs> I'm going to read that. We've got two more in, in this list, and then we can say goodbye to this story. What, three, actually? Okay. This Interesting, next one here, though. It's different points have been absolutely fantastic, haven't they, Dave? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's stuff. It's stuff that we can really can do without. Um, now the next one is the BBC. Yeah, we can do without the BBC uh, in this year. Well, what do you think, Jeff? Uh, uh, um, it's it's still. I'm, I'm, I don't want to swear. It's Sunday day. Uh, the, the bias BBC. Um, it needs to be done. It needs to be gone. Uh, it, it needs to be uh, gone, and I don't know. I, I don't know, Dave. I, I've, you know, we talked about this for years, haven't we? You know, the way that they've always been. They've always been against. You know, they, they, they're, they're rather uppercut chappies, aren't they? You know, and, and, and we uh, people like myself, we, you know, the underlings, don't you know? Is yeah, that's what they've always looked down at us, you know, and uh, you know, treat us with contempt like they always have done. And they always probably will do, Dave, one way or the other. They might be, they might, you know, end up gone, but you know that there's always going to be that class that'll be talking down their noses about people like us, working class chappies, don't you know, uh, who they absolutely deplore. That's where it comes, deplorables. We are the deplorables, aren't we? I'm, I'm, I'm an adorable and deplorable, to be honest with you, Dave. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, you're just like a little, you're just like a, you know, like a little koala, Jeff. You know, it, it, it just, it's just awesome. And we're going to have, we're gonna have another story based on that, maybe later on in the show. It, it depends if we get to it. Now, the, the next to last thing that he gets to on this, okay, and his explanation for it is see George Soros. Uh, you know, what we can do without, uh, happily in 2020 is uh, the squad. Uh, Democrat Congresswoman Ilham Omar, uh, Alexandria Occasional. Occasion, <laughs> he, he did write that. Alexandria <laughs> o, oh, Occasional Cortez. <laughs> oh, no, Cortex. Oh, my God. He, he totally did Cortex, this. Okay. Yeah. Al, yeah, Alexandria Occasional Dash Cortex. And uh, Rashida. I like that, Dave. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Rashida Tlaib and Ayanna Presley, um, and Jeff, if you don't mind, as the American, I'll um, I'll take first one on this one. Yeah, we can definitely do without them, and hopefully, Lord willing, in November they'll still be around, but they won't be in power. So, uh, guys, you know, out there, Americans, uh, you, you know, you know who to vote for. You've seen the results of what they've been doing since they took power in Congress got a chance to resolve this in this November. Uh, Jeff? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm in total agreement with you, Dave. I mean, anybody that thinks the way that the, the Democrats think uh, are a bunch of Smurfs. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you guys, but you're Smurfs. When I see them walking down that corridor, it was, I, was, I could hear the Smurf song in the background. Didn't you, Dave? When you see them, they look like a bunch of Smurfs. I thought, all they need is the costumes now. Then they'd be doing the part. But, guys, can you believe? I mean, what they're trying to do, if they had their way, and your president is deposed from, from uh, his office, just think of any other president. Don't matter who they be. Don't forget that impeachment will be there to hit them. Don't forget, there's always a comeback. No matter what you do, whatever happens, somewhere down the line, you're going to be put in front and you're going to have the same problems. So whatever happens, I would say, stand firm, 
Do not let them get their way. They are totally evil. The whole thing is evil. And just fight the good fight. That's all I tell you, brothers and sisters. You know, and I know it's, it, things are hard out there, but you, you've got to fight the good fight. Never, ever surrender. But don't, don't forget them words. Never surrender to these people. Because they are the evil. You're the good people. Fight the good fight. In God we trust. There you go, Dave. I'll leave you that. All right. Well, Jeff, now the final one in here, even though it's not the final one, but it's one that I know you'll have a lot to agree with. And it's one that frankly makes me sick um, because of the example that he uses. The final one here is excuses for Muslim terrorism. Now, I like that he says Muslim terrorism, but he will cite a case here that we've been following ever ever since it occurred. And, well, I'll just go ahead and read this out, okay? Mental illness used to be the favorite excuse, timelessly trotted out by the failing MSN after each new terrorist incident. But in 2019, a French judge took disingenuousness to new extremes in the case of an African immigrant, I'm not going to say the a-hole's name, who murdered his Jewish neighbor. Though he recited verses from the Koran and yelled Lahu Akbar as he stabbed elderly Jewish woman Sarah Halimi. Oh. Yeah, that, that's who, who it's about, Sarah Halimi. Before throwing I remember her this case, three, Dave. Before throwing her three floors to her death, the judge ruled that he had no criminal case to answer because he had smoked marijuana beforehand. The weed, yeah, that'll be it. Funny, though, isn't it how it only makes you a psychopathic killer if you belong to one particular religion? So, yes. We can do without excuses for Muslim terrorism. Sarah Halimi's murder will go unpunished. And this Mohammedan will walk free. That's justice after all of these years. Justice makes me sick, man. It makes me sick. But, you know, the thing about it is these judges who make this judgment, this call, you know, they, they might not be judged here on earth but they will be judged they will be judged you know don't think that they won't be and the person that done this absolutely horrific crime to this elderly lady well his punishment is eternal burning burning oh i hope you don't wish this on anybody but with doing that to an elderly lady a defensive like defensive lady I'm sorry, I have no mercy for people like that, Dave. And, uh, and most of the people that have great listeners, I'm sure you would agree. And I'm sure a few of you would disagree with me. But I know I've got, I show no mercy to people like this. These are despicable. These are despicable evil that walks this planet. Unfortunately, uh, there's other evil people that facilitate them. And you'd see by that judge. He facilitated. What happens? He walked free, did he, from this case, Dave? Walked free, did he? As far as I know, Jeff, now that m there may be some charge for the marijuana, though I doubt it. Uh, the guy, the guy had been uh, had been imprisoned, uh, jailed, whatever, for the amount of time that this case has gone on, because it's gone on for a few years. Okay, but uh, as far as I can tell, he's going to just walk on this one. He's just going to walk on a murder. And this, this is this is how, uh, this is how, and this, by the way, um, dovetails very well into the show's theme. This is political correctness gone mad. Okay, th this kind of murder. I guarantee, if this had been a Christian who had killed a Mohammedan woman, uh, citing verses from the Bible and shouting, Jesus saves, get ready to go to Jesus. If that had been the case, this man would have been put under the prison years ago. There, there, there wouldn't have been any of this prevarication or anything. And yet, because this individual, this a-hole, 
was a Mohammedan. He was allowed to literally get away with murder. And, and that really, Jeff, is, again, the monster of political correctness, my friend. Now, um, if you don't mind, Jeff, and I, I know you've got, you've got about five minutes before you need to call back in, but uh, why don't we go ahead I think and my clock's move on. wrong, Dave, actually. It could be because I'm on another computer. It's just, it thinks it's slightly off of it, so it's showing. Oh, my clock is showing 21.15 here, Dave. Uh, but the show is, oh, I've got 43 minutes left of it. That's amazing. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. now, um, what we're going to do, we're going to move on, because the main thrust of this show is about political correctness and how it's just come, it's just become a monster. And yeah. I, thought, I thought about this because, you know, a lot of people have seen the Frankenstein movies, the, the Hollywood version of Frankenstein movies. Um, not a whole lot of people have read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, what, what she wrote in 1816. No, guys, not 1818, 1816. Look it up. She wrote that during the famous Year Without a Summer. In fact, that's part of the reason why uh, the original story was written. Okay? Um, Because (laughs) she and the poet Shelley and some other author were kind of sitting around a Swiss uh, chalet or whatever. Uh, They couldn't go tromping around outside in the mountains because it was too cold and rainy, so they all decided to write a ghost story. And (laughs) hers won. And the poet Shelley just kept bugging her and bugging her and bugging her until two years later, the story Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus was produced. Now, was... Wow, I didn't know that, Doug. Yeah. And basically, we all... Anyone who's read the books knows what the story's about. It's about a... um, it's about a man who creates a creature using, well, more or less using alchemy. All that stuff, guys, in the movies with electricity and all that stuff, forget that. Um, if you read it in the book, it's, it's more about like alchemy and chemicals and stuff like that than, than electricity. In fact, electricity isn't even mentioned as far as I know. But the, the creature is created, and it's big and strong, and... It becomes angry because people don't accept it, and then it gets out of Dr. Frankenstein's control. The creature is not called Frankenstein. It's called the creature. Frankenstein is the man who created the creature, and the creature gets out of Dr. Frankenstein's control, and eventually it kills him. Okay? And that is what's happened with political correctness today. It started out, and Jeff, I know you'll remember this, it started out as people just saying to each other, you know what? Yeah, this this stuff of disrespecting each other because of skin color and things like that is is pretty much a bunch of nonsense, and we we shouldn't do it. And that that's what it started out with. It started out with people trying to get other people to agree mutually to respect each other, and that was all right. But because the left wanted power, they grabbed onto that, and they've turned it into this horrible thing that it is now where if you put a foot wrong, even if you're on the left, you're going to get nailed. And we have two examples of what ha- of, of the culture that we've created now. And one of them, Jeff, is this thing that I want to play. All right? And um, if you want to call back in beforehand... Yeah, I'll, um, I will do, Dave. Do that. Thank go you, ahead and Dave. call back in. Yeah, go ahead and call back in and then I'll... Uh, I'll I'll play this once you get back in. Go ahead, call back in. Okay, bro. Yeah. Now, guys, this this also is from last year, but I think it's very important for you to hear because, um, and and we have mentioned this as well in uh, in the previous show, the beast of political correctness has gotten so bad that even famous lefties have uh, have had to spend days, weeks, months, walking back uh, and, and, you know, just getting into groveling apologies because of simple things that they have said. I cannot remember the name of the tennis professional who was all into the LGBTQRX equals MC squared community and advocating for it and everything, who basically was um, 
who basically said that she was concerned for uh, girls and women's sports because of the uh, of the invasion of the trannies, basically. Um, and and I, yeah, I think it was Martina Navratilova. I could be wrong. There. And they they flayed her alive. This woman that that you know previously had been uh, been a part of the gay mafia practically. Well, this isn't the only one that this happened to. Jeff, if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and play this. This is from Paul Watson. This uh, he did this on the 20th of last year, so we just missed this one. Um, mm. But this one is seven and a half minutes long. You ready for this? Okay, thank you, Phil. All right, you guys are listening to the English Defense League Radio Show. Here you go. This is Paul Watson. You know what's funny about J.K. Rowling getting cancelled by the very same woke outrage mob that she helped create? Everything! But what hateful, bigoted invective did Rowling spew to warrant the spiteful, vindictive hatred of thousands of woko haram jihadists? She suggested, wait for it, that biological sex is a real thing. Ah, we go again. That's right. J.K. Rowling was cancelled because she defended a woman who was fired for saying, quote, men cannot change into women. Maya Forstater lost her job at the Center for Global Development, a think tank that campaigns against inequality for a tweet that was over a year old, which stated the following. What I am so surprised at is that smart people I admire, who are absolutely pro-science in other areas and champion human rights and women's rights, are tying themselves in knots to avoid saying the truth that men cannot change into women because that might hurt men's feelings. Here's a photograph of the self-described trans woman, SNP councillor Gregor Murray, that Forstater was talking about. This is his, I mean her, her, Twitter profile. Bruh. Murray was previously suspended by his party for abusing a woman on Twitter by calling her the C word. Forstater also said that expanding the legal definition of women so that it includes biological males will undermine women's rights and protections. And that, quote, women and girls lose out on privacy, safety, and fairness if males are allowed into changing rooms, dormitories, prisons, and sports teams. Sounds reasonable, right? No! A feminist charity worker who campaigned for women's rights is now out of a job because she said that this person is not a woman. Let that sink in. It's now legal precedent in the UK that employees can be fired for asserting there are only two biological sexes. Maybe the NHS needs a purge of all their so-called medical professionals. Let's be clear. This wasn't about gender. This wasn't about, quote, non-binary people being able to identify as infinite different gender identities. This wasn't about intersex people being born with a mix of male and female genitalia, or with a combination of both XX and XY chromosomes. This was about biological sex, saying that a person born with XY chromosomes is a man, and a person born with XX chromosomes is a woman, and that that's a scientific fact. That's the premise that J.K. Rowling was merely suggesting that she believed. She wasn't saying that trans people couldn't call themselves women or identify as women. She was saying that someone born with XY chromosomes is a biological male, and that that's immutable. That's it. Rowling threw her support behind force data by tweeting, Dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who'll have you, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. Hello, based in red pill department? No. This was a disgusting transphobic attack on an oppressed community, and boy did they let her know about it. Denying the existence of trans women is an act of violence. Denying their right to claim their womanhood is an act of violence. Over the past couple of years, J.K. Rowling has used her massive platform and influence almost exclusively to destroy the UK left and ruin the lives of trans people. The best part of the Harry Potter fan community is that we read so much queer shit into J.K. Rowling's books, despite her being a disappointing failure of a human who is probably horrified. We all knew you were transphobic. Thanks for finally coming right out to own it. Impressive that J.K. Rowling has managed to completely incinerate all of the goodwill she accrued from creating the most successful youth fantasy series of all time in just under a decade. Anything is possible, folks, if you just keep treating. Going full turf, I see. At least you finally took off that mask for all to see. As a gay man that found safety in Hogwarts throughout my childhood, knowing that trans people wouldn't be able to have that safety breaks my heart. Hogwarts is not real.
The head of LGBTQ rights organization, GLAD, said Rowling's tweet, quote, puts trans people at risk. Did J.K. Rowling just destroy the legacy of Harry Potter with a single transphobic tweet? J.K. Rowling, retire, bitch. J.K. Rowling, I don't think a woman should have lost her job for talking about sex and gender issues. The radical trans cult, burn the witch, burn her! What makes this even more hilarious is that it's not just the progressive far left eating one of their own. They're cannibalizing a woke icon. Some of you may remember back in the day, JK and I had a few battles. Mainly over Rowling's virtue signaling about the West taking in refugees while she personally took in precisely zero, despite owning several mansions, one of which had 18 spare bedrooms. This escalated to the point where Rowling passive aggressively retweeted a satirical fake news story obviously meant to be about me. So do I really care that the ideological monster that she once fed is now devouring her? No. At every point, Rowling tried to ingratiate herself with Woko Haram, to the extent where she felt the need to pander to LGBT by suddenly announcing she always thought Dumbledore was gay, even to the extent where she retroactively made the Hermione character black, despite the fact that her own books literally said she had, quote, a white face. Yes, you go girl, slay! No, there'll be no more slaying for JK Rowling, She's done. By the time you watch this video, she'll probably have been forced into a groveling, apologetic walk back. She's already declined the offer of being re-educated. Bad move. What now for J.K. Rowling? What now for the woke princess whose crown has slipped? What now for punished turf? Maybe it's time for a good old-fashioned book burning. What could be more progressive? Maybe it's not sufficient for men to use the legal system to force women to hold certain opinions. Maybe that's not feminist enough. Maybe the only way we can stop transphobia is by removing cis women's right to vote. Maybe the only person who can offer the Harry Potter author any kind of redemption is Jessica Yaniv. Time to wax them balls, bigot. There are more than two genders. Question, if there are more than two genders, why is there only two fits, men and women? Mind your own business. Here's another question. Should we sympathize with JK Rowling or simply laugh in her face? Definitely the latter. This is what happens when you hand a radical vocal minority the power to dictate biological science. This is what happens when you hand a feverish mob the power to destroy people's careers for having a different opinion. This is what happens when you hand far left progressives the power to cannibalize and control language. This is what happens when you place your legacy in the hands of people who will gleefully throw you under a bus merely to appear more virtuous than you on social media. JK Rowling, you made the bed. Now it's time to lie in it. It's absolutely crucial for you to help me fight the war on free speech by supporting me via subscribe star, link in description, and also signing up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter. And that is it for this time. Next time, part three. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening, and may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 2020. Anno Domini. Now for Dave's Canes, extras that help you navigate the new media world. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network. From a public locker inside a dilapidated Long Island rail station comes a show designed to piss off liberals using truth, facts, and ridicule. The Lid Radio Show, featuring the conservative voice from the People's Republic of New York. The Lid himself, Jeff Dunnitz. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on the SHR Media Network. Go to shrmedia.com. At Lid Radio, we fight for the truth, justice, and a good kosher T-bone. If you don't listen... 
Hillary Clinton might sneak into your bedroom in her house coat late at night and blame you for her election loss. It's the Lid Radio Show with Jeff Dunnitz. This is Shannon Wright of The Right Way with Shannon and Mike in the AM. Mike's not here, so I got to talk fast. You got to join us. Fall season, getting ready to start up with a whole bunch of new stuff. News and food and politics and sports and entertainment and a whole bunch of stuff. But wait, Mike's coming. I got to go. Remember, Shannon and Mike in the AM on SHR Media, Monday through Thursday, 7 to 9 AM. Make sure you tune in. Featuring right thinking from a left brain and doing the job the American maggots won't. BZ is fundamentally changing America one diaper at a time. Just when safety pin manufacturers are running out of metal for the diapers of the leftists, where the speech is free, but the drinks are not. The bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon can be heard every Tuesday and Thursday night, commencing at 11 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Pacific, where pushback is a requisite art form in and of itself. Let your ossicles be truly liberated when you listen to the bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon only on SHR Media Network. No ferrets were harmed in the making of this ad. Join me, Jack Alexander, for the Jack Alexander Experiment podcast as I take a unique outsider's look at the issues affecting the USA. I fearlessly take on the issues that everyone else is too scared to touch. The Jack Alexander Experiment Podcast is available wherever good podcasts can be found, like Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcast. The Jack Alexander Experiment, because it's not a matter of left versus right, it's a matter of right versus wrong. It's your business diva here, Melanie Collette. I am inviting you to a front row seat as I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers and shakers in the world of business. Listen in and discover financial truths on a global, domestic, and household scale. Uncover topics that will impact your wallet today and in the future. Money Talk with Melanie airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. East, 2 p.m. West, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. You can't afford to miss it. Featuring the effervescent contrarian Sackheads Clint plus the unrestrained bulbosity of BZ, the Sackheads Against Tyranny is a real chat show. Doubling your late-night conservative talk show pleasure with double the hosts, you can listen every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. Please note, some contents may have settled during shipping. Member FDIC, batteries not included, warranty void in Montenegro. Conservative media done right. You're listening to the SHR Media Network.